San Francisco State University is offering a race and resistance studies major. A boycott, divest, and sanction movement at Georgetown University was successful in blocking funding for a study abroad trip to Israel. And a Texas university has renamed one of its buildings despite disagreements from the Board of Regents. We have details on all of those stories and more. I'm Abigail Streetman, and this is Campus Countdown. In our number three story of the week, Texas State Regents were unhappy with how University took Sally Ward Beretta's name off of a residence hall. In February, campus reform reported that Texas State University removed the name of historic female leader Sally Ward Beretta from a residence hall, citing ties with the United Daughters of the Confederacy. However, results from a Campus Reform Freedom of Information Act request show that the Board of Regents was not united in this decision. Campus Reform obtained a January 31st email from a regent to the vice chairman of the Board of Regents in which she expressed disapproval of the school, quote, erasing Beretta's memory. She wrote, it is very rare during that era that a woman had such high education, let alone a position of influence. I really hate to see her memory erased from a school to which she donated 125 acres for it to be built upon. Which brings the question to mind. Is the university still using this land? And if so, will they be returning this land to Beretta's ancestors? The Texas State University website does confirm that Beretta purchased 125 acres of land in Wimberley, Texas, and then donated it to the school. It also notes that Beretta further contributed to the school through the Sally Beretta Gift Fund and the Sally W. Beretta Award, which acknowledges an outstanding woman scholar. The W. Beretta Award has now been renamed to the Texas State University Outstanding Senior Woman Award. However, the website's meta description still lists it as the Sally W. Beretta Outstanding Senior Woman Award. And despite renaming a residence hall and renaming this award, one of the lodges on campus is still called Beretta Lodge. Campus Reform obtained a separate email of dissent from a chairman of the Board of Regents to the vice chairman. This email stated, read the piece from Texas State regarding the removal of the name of Sally W. Beretta from one of our buildings. The governor's appointment secretary is not very happy that this information was published prior to coming before the Board of Regents. The question now is, will the university take the Beretta's name off of the other buildings? And will they continue to undermine the opinions of their Board of Regents? In our number two story of the week, graduate students lose funding for a trip to Israel due to pro-Palestine student activism. Here with all of the details on that story is campus reform correspondent, Blakely Fiedler. Thank you, Abby. A boycott, divest, and sanction BDS coalition of Georgetown University students recently celebrated the blocking of funding for a university-sponsored educational trip to Israel, forcing the university to sever institutional ties with the trip organizer. Georgetown's graduate student government had previously voted to allocate $30,000 for a student group to Israel through the organization International Trek. But on its website, the coalition accuses International Trek of presenting a false narrative on Israel, claiming that the state forcibly expels Palestinians, takes away their lands and demolishes their homes, and has murdered hundreds of Palestinians. International Trek is a nonprofit that receives no funding from the Israeli government in support of its mission to introduce students to Israel's innovation, culture, and complexity. Faculty-led trips for MBAs provide students with a four-credit trip to Israel and an itinerary customized to the coursework, according to its website. The BDS Coalition mounted a campaign against this trip by using email, public forums, and private conversations with the graduate student government, which caved to the group's demands within a week. This is what happens when you show young adults that opposing points of view can be silenced or canceled. These students are not acting like the young academics that you're supposed to be. They are acting more like three-year-olds who throw tantrums when something does not go their way. Freedom of speech and thought belongs to everyone in America, not just one side. Back to you, Abby. In our number one story of the week, race and resistance studies major will train future racial social justice activists with race and with radicalism and revolution classes. San Francisco State University is offering an undergraduate major in race and resistance studies. 
to train students in the, quote, multiple forms of resistance and struggle aimed at achieving racial social justice. The department's mission statement states that race and resistance studies utilizes an approach that is centered in a praxis of resistance. The May trip will cover histories of resistance, gender issues, transnational issues, and cultural production. The department also offers a minor in this program, just in case you were wondering. The department's website states that students have and will continue to be engaged with social movement building efforts that allow them to, quote, engage a life committed to both understanding and transforming the world on a basis of social justice. Let us not forget that social justice means equally distributing the wealth, opportunities, and privileges within a society. Redistributionist policies that we see play out on a larger scale in socialist systems. One class in the program called Community Service Learning, Praxis in Race and Resistance Studies, provides students with, quote, experiential learning in struggles for social justice, community empowerment, and equity within and across communities of color. Another notable course is called Race, Radicalism, and Revolution. And this class gives students an idea of liberated visions of society and world. And now for everyone's favorite segment, the woke tweet of the week. The Twitter account Wokal Distance posted a tweet on March 23rd highlighting a new video from commentator and Blaze Media podcast host Stephen Crowder. The tweet reads, Stephen Crowder submitted a paper called Fatness and Self-Care in the Era of Trump to an academic conference at Massey University using the name C. Matheson. The paper, which is every bit as absurd as you can imagine, was accepted. The false paper was not only accepted by a Fat Studies conference at Massey University, but it also got him a spot to speak at the conference. After being invited to present his findings virtually at the 2020 Fat Studies New Zealand conference, during Crowder's presentation, which is now posted on his YouTube channel, he wore a shoulder-length wig, bright pink lipstick, and a pink sweater, which he shoved pillows underneath to make him appear as an overweight woman. Here's an excerpt from his speech. Because of our leader's bigotry, fatness, I will argue, acts as a distancing mechanism from the president as well as his supporters, producing both physical and ideological space that can insulate an individual from intolerant, bigoted, or violent ideology. Trump's fat phobia even reaches into the United States international relationships. In his dealings with North Korea, Trump referred to Kim Jong-un as, quote, fat and short. <laughs> the best part of this parody is that nobody could tell that this was completely satirical. And Crowder's C. Matheson was even featured on the event program, which is still on the event's website. So really, how serious are these woke fields of study when their own practitioners cannot even distinguish between parody and their own agendas. That's all we have for you this week. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. You can follow along with all of the campus craziness on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Campus Reform. I'm Abigail Streetman. Thanks for watching the Campus Countdown.